Hi, I'm Pastor Rick. Welcome to Life Sharing and Pioneers. Today we're going to be looking at the topic of relationships, something that we all look forward to at some point in our lives. Our topic for today is husbands and wives doing their part. Can you say that with me? Husbands and wives doing their part. Let's look at 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. Wives, in the same way, be submissive to your husbands, so that if any of them do not believe the word, they may be won over without words by the behavior of their wives, when they see the purity and reverence of your lives. Your beauty should not come from outward adornment, such as braided hair and the wearing of gold jewelry and fine clothes. Instead, it should be that of your inner self, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is of great worth in God's sight. For this is the way the holy women of the past who put their hope in God used to make themselves beautiful. They were submissive to their own husbands, like Sarah who obeyed Abraham and called him her master. You are her daughters if you do what is right and do not give way to fear. Husbands, in the same way, be considerate as you live with your wives and treat them with respect as the weaker partner and as heirs with you of the gracious gift of life so that nothing will hinder your prayers. Now, we as a people in our society, we hear a whole lot of talk about love and relationships and how they are just going to be the most wonderful thing that two people could possibly imagine. We're under the false idea that because we love each other, everything is going to work out easily. My friends, I want you to know this. Nothing is harder than having a good, happy marriage. It takes a lot of work, sacrifice, and commitment in order to have a good marriage. The Bible tells us stuff inside of it because God knows that left on our own, we are not going to do it. Now, the first thing we should see from this passage is that good looks is not enough. Just because somebody looks good does not mean they are going to be a great partner for you in life. Tell your neighbor, good looks is not enough. Good looks is not enough. Why? This passage also tells us that we are going to be selfish and we are going to demand our own way. Tell your neighbor, you can be mighty selfish. Yes, you can be mighty selfish. This passage tells us that if we are left to ourselves, we will try to dominate each other. This passage tells us that we will not be considerate toward each other. I know when we first fall in love, we just know this person is going to do all these wonderful things for us. But trust me on this. Don't go by your feelings Go by what the Word of God says, so that when these things happen, you won't be surprised. It tells us that we will not always respect each other. You say, how on earth can that happen? It happens because of life and things that come into our lives. This passage tells us that we will not always be fair to each other. Okay, are you getting a sense of why it is marriage is a lot of work if you intend to have a good one? You see, when we look at this other person, we just think of how wonderful they are and how happy we're going to be with us. And, and we forget that we are both sinners and sin will destroy anything good if it is not held in check. Let your neighbor know, sin will work against you. Sin will work against you, and the sin that is going to work against us in relationships is the sin that is in our own hearts. Now, the starting point for a good relationship of husband and wife is the Bible's warning not to fall in love with someone who does not know Christ. 
And whatever you do, certainly don't marry the person. Now, we are under the delusion that the only thing the Bible is interested in is having somebody come to church with us. And that's why it says, do not be unequally yoked. No, the Bible isn't as much concerned about whether or not you have somebody to come to church with you as it is what life is going to be like for you once you leave the church and you've got to go home and live with this other person. God's word is trying to get us to understand that marriage is hard work. And for it to be enjoyable, you need to play by the same rules. A believer and an unbeliever are not bound by the same rules. They're in the same game, they're in the same relationship, but they're not playing by the same rules. And remember this, just knowing what you are supposed to do in a relationship does not mean you're actually going to do it. So you may say, I know what it takes to have a great relationship. And he knows what it takes to have a great relationship. It means that we got to love each other. Yeah, but the price to love each other is oftentimes higher than what most couples want to play, pay. Now again, just knowing the rules doesn't mean you're going to abide by the rules. Tell your neighbor, it's not enough just to know the rules. Amen. Every professional sports team has players on it. And all of those players know exactly what the rules are. And yet, if you go to any game, every professional game has rules, umpires, referees, or judges. Why do they have these umpires, these referees, and they judges? Why? because they know the players are going to violate the rules. If there were no judges, there would be constantly arg there would be constant argument over whether or not the rule was broken. Was he offside? Was he not offside? Was it a foul? Was it not a foul? Was it interference? Was it not interference? Was it a touchdown? Was it not a touchdown? Was it an out? Was it not an out? Uh, fights would be breaking out over one team trying to enforce a rule when the other team disagreed that a rule had been broken. After a while, the game would not be fair. Whoever could enforce the, their own rules would win, and the other team would be miserable. Nobody would want to go to that game anymore. Teams would refuse to play certain teams because of the way the team would be acting when it came to the rules. Now, I go through all that to tell you, referees and judges are good if you want to have a good game where everybody feels appreciated, everybody has a good time, and everybody thought they got a fair shot during the game. Now, in marriage, you need a referee who both people will listen to and obey and say, okay, whatever the referee says, that's what we are going to do. Now, if you are married to an unbeliever or you're even dating an unbeliever, you do not have a referee that both of you will listen to. Now, some of you will try to pull in your mom, your dad, your co-workers, your friends, or whatever as a referee, but the other person is not bound to listen to what they have to say. Therefore, there is no one to issue a final decree in a situation. Whoever is stronger is going to get his or her own way. And in so doing, you will trample the feelings of the other person. Anger, resentment, hurt, and abuse becomes part of the relationship. That is why it turns ugly and people want to end the relationship. They want to get out of the marriage. They want a divorce. Now, if you are married to a believer, you are still going to have some struggles. But, hi, thank you for watching our video. If you'd like to watch this message in its entirety, please visit us at our website, www.glenvillenewlife.com. And thanks again for watching.